started as far as um I know you're a family band, right? Yeah. But yeah. let's let's go to the beginning. How did it start? Let's go to the Genesis. How did it start? Tell tell us, you know, the Genesis where it started, the spark. How did everybody start the team together and you guys finally How did it start? Um I guess I'll I'll start it and I'll pass it. Mhm. Uh, Cuz there are, there are a lot of stories, some of these stories, they're not conflicting, but it's just perspective. Um, it started, um, I've been doing this a long time. I've been, I'm well up into my age now and uh, I'm in way, up, way up in the sixties, but I would say this, I've been doing this since I was three years old. And okay. I come from a legacy of musicians, um, who worked with Matt Cole, um, just found out that John Batiste is my very close cousin, um, from Archie Bell to Donnie Hathaway. So it's, it's, it's just been in my family. Right. And so, you know, I've been running. I'm a I'm a graduate of Grambling State University. <laughs> and um, we had one of the greatest music departments in the world um, with teachers who were uh, responsible responsible for people like Joe Sample, Kurt Whalem, uh -huh. um, you know, the laws. And so I had that kind of student. But before then, I had my mother. When I began to formulate big bands here in San Francisco in the Bay Area. Mm -hmm. uh, that became like a sort of a big thing here and kind of made a little name for myself here, but I've been in the industry a long time. Right. And so the children were always at our rehearsal. Right. Um, from, from the time I could remember. And um, we didn't know they were soaking this stuff in. Right. You know, because we play everything from Basie to Duke Ellington to you name it. You name it. If, it's, if it's black music, it's being played. Right. Papa, Papa C, tell, tell the people who you play with. Tell, give them an idea who you play with. Um, I play with the Basie Orchestra, the Duke Ellington Orchestra. I played with uh, Thelonious Monk wow. um, band after he had passed. Those are, those I, are legends. Those, God, they, those are yeah, all legends. These, these were my mentors, the great... Wow. Randy Weston was also one of my tutors, wow. one of my teachers. Um, and then, you know, I, of course, I've played with some of the biggest names in the business, uh, from Lenny Williams to Phyllis Hyman to... Um, I, to it with the OJs. I mean, it, 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 that, that's a long list. Right. But the I think when I signed with Maurice White and Kalimba Records was when I got a really good education about really how to record music really how to record right. vocals right the music aspect of it he was cool with you know but when he when we got to the vocals he said i'm gonna be up your behind on the vocals right and he certainly was um so like going back to how this thing started so we would have our instruments in the living room mm -hmm. and um i guess they were practicing when we didn't know <laughs> maybe when we were at home or something because when uh, I was in the back room one day, and I think I was talking to Hubert Hughes on the phone, mm -hmm. if I remember correctly. Wow. And Hubert, <laughs> Hubert is one of my dear friends who I've produced music with, uh, who's on the East Coast. Right. From uh, Hubert Hughes, the D train, and uh, and we love that we love the East Coast, fast right. big block moving in New York. Right. <laughs> so anyway, so to make a long story short, I was in the back room talking on the phone. And I told my wife, I said, tell them to turn that music down. <laughs> and, uh, Sounds like a Michael Jackson story, guys. <laughs> I mean, Jackson yeah, Five so, stories. <laughs> so, my wife went to the living room. And when she went to the living room, she ran back to me and said, you know, you got some shit. And I'm like, I'm on the phone. <laughs> right. And I'm, I'm sure I'm talking to you. Because I remember I... Uh, make such a big deal I say you let me I'll be right back right. and I left him hanging on the phone right. <laughs> because when I walked in the room my lips were hanging because they were in the living room prolifically playing White Rabbit by Jefferson Airplane wow. and my daughter was sitting right next to me with drumming and singing the lead at the same time and that is one of the most difficult things to do. Awesome. My son was on bass. Everybody was on some instrument, 
and it was like, oh my god. <laughs> what? what did y'all learn how to play? That, <laughs> hey, hey, Papa, that bell went off, right? That that light, that light went off when that's you saw. When the light, that's when the light went off. Right? Yeah. You know, because when you're dealing with grown folks, you got to deal with babysitting grown folks. I want to get paid now. Right. You know, right. So it's like running bands is, is pretty difficult right. because yeah. you got to be teachers, psychiatrists, and everything else. Right. So when the lights went on, I said, "Oh, I'm done with the drug stuff. This yeah. is it." Hey, have you have you guys seen I'm um, Black Jack? I'm um, Black Jack in School School of Rock. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we de he's dealing with the bands, and then um. He he saw the kids um, um, playing their instruments. <laughs> I remember his eyebrows went up. That was one of the funniest scenes. He's like, "Oh, I got it." So I guess that's what you you went through, Papa C. It's gorgeous, and I love their performance. And I think you guys are superstars. Can you inspire? We were we were always singing stuff together. Right, right. I had no idea that they developed such skill level. When I say with skill level, you saw. Right. You know, have y'all been secretly practicing on my instruments? Well, they had to, right? They had to be practicing on you. They they were. That's the point. Wow. Wow. They picked it up to start playing. But I'm gonna let I'm gonna let one of them. Yeah, yeah. yeah let, so, g give us the idea of what was going on, you know, during that time, so, by the way, Thank you. Oh yeah. This is Isis the drummer. Hi, Isis the drummer. The oh. favorite of all the children. <laughs> <laughs> my, my kids I got five children, they do the same thing of I'm the favorite. <laughs> So, um, the reason right? wow. why I actually played that song was because, um, there's this, uh, the there's this the farmer's market that goes on at, um, uh, on, uh, on Fillmore Street, right. and like they would always play time. with their band, so much with, your, to with come, band with it. Jazz hieroglyphic, yeah, and Mama would always, Mama C would always, uh, sing this song. White Rabbit, yes. right. and I oh, thought okay. it would just be really cool if I could play Wild Beast Things. Nice. 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 Now, anybody else have any insight, like how you guys was practicing? Because when Dad saw you, your skill level was good. So you guys had to be sneaking, doing something. Anybody else got? I know what we were doing. <laughs> this is Ahara. Hey, uh, Ahara. Uh, you know, I don't really remember just from my perspective i don't remember any of it <laughs> um i remember playing white rabbit though i just don't mm -hmm. remember that being, like our first song it, it was just such a i don't know yeah it was just something that was just natural to us and that it right. was something that like, it wasn't like something where it was like oh this is our first song that we're gonna do right i don't know we were we're just kind of playing around. <laughs> so, so you, so you guys inherit the talent. Then, you you guys had the ears. Um, you guys and must have inherited the talent. But you guys also had to be. Oh, we got Fadi in the in the house too. Right, let's see if we can grab him. Uh, he's not, okay, maybe I'm, I'm gonna have to take something off. But we do have um um J Jimmy James Houston from Fadi Records in the house, y'all. So I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, yeah, yeah. So he, he's he's in here. I, we see him. Um, you guys will see it probably in the. Oh, you guys can see him, right? Can you guys see him? Fadi, Fadi records. I don't know if you guys can see him now, but I can see. I can see everybody. Um, yeah. So um, so okay. So you guys inherit the talent. You was able to maybe play around with the instruments and actually sound good. Where Papa C was impressed. Um, so now, Mama C, did you know before Papa C, or did you you discovered it almost the same time? No, we discovered it at the same time. I mean, we knew our children were just that, you know, you observe your children, and you, you can tell, like, oh, it's really natural for them, because when you started singing, um, they had, you could tell they had perfect pitch and perfect recall. Okay. So, you know how there's, like, those pitch, um, what do they call them, harmonica, pitch harmonicas, things that people need before they start singing the song? Right. The children never needed that. They would sing wow. it in the, the threat key every time. Well, well, and I was like, oh, cool, yeah, it was so cool. And so, um, <laughs> I would see, I, it's just beating on things sometimes. Uh-huh. But I, uh... 
my husband, well, my husband and I, we never wanted to push music onto them because, you know, if you know, if you're a musician, an artist, it, it can be a, a tough life. So we didn't, we didn't want them to to choose that in any way. But when we saw that it was, it was choosing them, it wasn't us choosing it for them. Right. It felt when something feels so natural. You know, it's it's almost like it's a it's a calling. So right. we didn't want to fight that. Right. Okay. Cool. Cool. So now, all right. So how soon did you did you guys put them to work? Like how soon was it? A day? A week? Uh... Oh, it was a progression. What ha yeah. what happened was, yeah. Okay. And I'll let you tell the story of the name. Um. So what we did was, I had them. <laughs> my my wife is actually Joe Jackson. I'm just the music director in this family, right, right? Right, So, I mean, when it comes to the music, I'm real crazy about that. But my wife is like the Joe Jackson of this family. So, <laughs> Joe Jackson. <laughs> yeah, so we, had, we started them out playing in school. Okay, cool. They would play for talent shows in school, like Jackson 5. Right, right. And then I heard Jermaine Jackson in this interview. And it just really stuck with me on how Michael was just basically they got in his ear and took him away from the family. And my wife and I, we said, well, we need to jump on this as soon as possible because I don't want people to keep thinking yeah. that this is some new Jackson 5 thing. Yeah. And I said, this is going to be a family thing. This right, is not that true. Right. Right. Happened. So we made sure that this became a family situation. Right. And, and then, you know, then my wife's going to tell you a story of some really good friends of ours who we've known for over, I've known for over 50 plus years, and right. that's the Escobedo family. Sheila E's mother and father. I'll let her talk. Yeah. Okay. So, um, when was it? Oh, we went to uh, Papa Pete's birthday party. Right. And it was, uh, we were hanging out with them after um, his concert at Yoshi's, and he asked about the children because they, you know, we've, we've met them. The children have met them, and, you know, he even sat with them at church. He played, he played with uh, Papa C's orchestra, so uh, he was like, how are the children? And I was like, oh, they're good. And he was like, so are you getting them into music? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and he, he said, wait. Why not? What are you doing? That's how I kept up with Sheila and with Juan and Peter Michael yeah. and Zena. And he was, you know, Zena is a dancer. Right. And I was like, oh my gosh. And the light went on in my head because he was like, yeah, I knew where Sheila was on Friday and Saturday night because yeah. she was playing with my orchestra. Right. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is That's so brilliant. <laughs> uh, and so that was when I was like, okay, let's, let's get them started. So, Papa C started calling them the C notes because of Curtis and it's musical and it's money, right? Right. So um, the children started playing separately, but then um, when Papa C start, when he stopped playing with his other orchestras and we were focusing as a family, we started calling us the Curtis family C notes. And right. there are other, there's a rap group and I think another band that's called C notes. So C -note. legally, okay. we have to go fully by the Curtis family C note. Right. Now uh, let, me, let me pause for one second. Keep keep that thought, guys. I just want to tell Fadi Records, call in that way you can interview. So call in at the 716-878-5104, James. And that way you can talk to them. We'll be able to hear your audio. All right, continue, Mama C. Okay, cool. Um so um so that's the Curtis family C notes. And what's funny is we were thinking about when we are first performance as an entire family right and that was when we did that ymca community event in sunnyvale and that was in 2019 oh my god that was four years that. ago i don't remember that and, yeah. and mama c 20 so the the children was performing by themselves themselves correct that was a, that was a totally that was our first performance as a family band okay but the, but before that the children were, were performing yeah. by yeah, themselves a, okay yeah they're earlier they right. were doing that their first performance was at the community music center nice um and annual we, we teach yeah at the community music center yeah my wife teaches boys and oh very know. nice very nice very nice so, so you guys are very community based too so 
Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, every, absolutely. everybody guys know you. You guys involve your hands are in a lot of things that happens in the community. And I'm sure everybody asks whenever they having something, they go, could you guys play or help us? I'm sure you get a lot of that. Yeah, well, that's why um, we're happy that we work at um, at an institution like the Community Music Center, uh -huh. um, because it being a it being such a, a long standing nonprofit over a hundred one hundred years old, it's actually the oldest music institution on this side of the Mason Dixon line. I stole your line. Wow. Hey, tell <laughs> the people. Can you tell the people where you at? Where you guys at? Yeah, so it's the San Francisco Community Music Center, okay. and we actually. Some of our students are in New York, and we teach them virtually. Yeah. Wow, that's the music center. Yeah, that's, that's right. awesome. Yeah. yeah, the director came from New York. Yeah. So that's what's cool about it because the director we had before, he didn't understand community the way that Julie Ruliak Steinberg. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> New York. He came here and brought a New York right. state of mind. That's yeah. what I love hey, about it. So you know, hey, Papa C, are you guys originally? Where, where are you guys originally from? Well. I'm originally from Louisiana. Oh, but, Louisiana. Okay. But no, I, I'm I'm a San Francisco. I I grew up here. Okay. Since early early '60s. Right. You know, '63 I came out here, and um, I started school in Louisiana. Okay. Town called, but so you were born in. But but yeah, I I'm I'm a San Francisco, really, by way of New Orleans. Okay. So, gotcha. But it's, so, Wait, but I did have to go back and forth to Louisiana all summer to like help with the with the farm and all that stuff. So. Okay. Oh, so you're a farm boy? You're a farm boy too? Yeah, I'm a country city <laughs> brother. <laughs> well, you guys don't dress um, country. You guys look hip and cool and all that. <laughs> uh, Mama C, where you from? Where you originally from? I grew up in a suburb that is about forty minutes away from San Francisco. Uh -huh. San Mateo. And it's it's night and day, wow. night and day. Um, it's twenty minutes. It seems like, minutes. yeah. But it's it's funny. As soon as I hit eighteen, I hit the city. I left the house. <laughs> <laughs> and in my family, that's a big no no. You only leave the house if you're right. married. I, so when I left, I ran. I, I hit eighteen and I ran. <laughs> Mama C, you remind me of Sheila E. Are you are you Latin part or something? What are no. you? <laughs> Everybody, that's right. Everyone thinks that she's related to the Escobedo family. Yeah. Or the Devar. <laughs> she's not? Um, no, wow. I'm not. I'm Tongan. What is that? So, what is that? Uh, <laughs> so, okay, we are literally, Tongans are literally a boat ride from Samoa. Oh, so if you know oh. Rock, oh, yeah. Okay. So the Rock's mom is Samoan. Oh, so wow. So Tonga is literally just a boat ride from there. And um, what's, fun, what's funny, when I say I'm Tongan, a lot of people say, what's a Tongan? What's that? So, yeah, it's uh, a, a boat ride from Samoa. And, so, um, you know, being a Tongan person, I, I, I really would love for my people to embrace their African heritage. Uh, their okay. You know what I mean? And, it's, you know, before colonialism, we didn't know nothing about race. If you look up ancient Hawaiian, Samoan, Tongan, they are black folks. Like right. Well, well, The Rock. The Rock. I, I think right. of The Rock. And he's yeah. kind of, he's kind of, you know, he's, we, we know he's Samoan, but he's kind of black too, you know. <laughs> no, so. his dad's black. His dad, his dad is a pro wrestler. Yeah. Right. Um, Dwayne Johnson. And don't get me started yeah, on pro wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you got a West, you got a Westland family? You no, got the G's? God. It's crazy. I used to be when I was young. Oh, oh wow. Man. Wow. This I, is something. I, I, yeah, yeah, Rocky, Rocky, Johnson Rocky, was, Johnson. Rocky Johnson was one of my favorite wrestlers. Yeah. He was cool. He was built. He had the afro. Yeah. <laughs> he had the sideburns, yeah. right? He had the sideburns? Oh, yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Rocky Johnson. And, and yeah, so um, and the Rock grandpa is Rocky Maivia. So then he took his grandpa's name with his dad, you know, his surname. Right. And um, his whole character is basically built is, is around his dad and his grandpa put together. So, you know, when he first came out, he came out as Rocky Maivia. Right. But then when he became The Rock, you know, he came out with The Nation and he embraced his blackness. It was yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> and The Rock. But, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, with, be with that being said, I always, with my children, I make sure that, you know, they know their mother Tongan. They, they know they're proud of their Tongan heritage. Right. They're black. Right. And 
I embrace my blackness and right. with with what I'm able to do professionally teaching when students come to me and they want to learn about black music and soul music I'm like I always tell them I'm I'm not secondhand information I'm like thirdhand information um so you, you I give you what I can give you you got to go to the store you got to get the source yeah, you got I'm head of the Department of Black Music Studies at the Community Music Center. So right. I, teach, I, I develop the program there. And what's interesting is is you want to see evolution and progress. Traditionally, when that school was, was started, it had, uh, it had a history of racism. And so when I got there, quite naturally being an activist, I pushed and pushed and pushed. And when Julie came on board, it was like, because she was in New York and she's so used to diversity, when she got here, she just opened um, Black Music Studies. How are you going to have a music program and you don't have a Black Music Studies program? And every all the music that has ever come out of America came right. from uh, enslaved Africans. Right, right. So, you know what I mean? So, yeah. From country to reggae, you name it. That's right. It's... It, Bluegrass, all of that. Thanks for okay. Hey, hey, James, turn down your your music. I mean, your audio a little bit because we're getting um the feedback. Okay. Hey, go ahead, guys. Yeah. yeah. So my children understand their history, mm -hmm. um, and they understand that the, their stewardship and the importance of the music. And we always tell people, music is not what we do. Music is who we are. All oh, right. What we what we do is community activism. What we do is we, we, we have a nonprofit that we, we, we utilize to connect to the community, but to also help strengthen families. That's what our nonprofit is all about. That's what we do. So music is so natural now that it's like we could go on like right. now, be uh, 10 minutes before something and they could learn something. I don't care how complex it is. I mean, even giant steps. Right. And people are always talking about how hard giant steps is, right? Right. They can, we can, they can play in anything. I don't care what it is. Classical, because they all read music and play by ear. So right. it's just been, it's been fun, you know. And I think that this point I do want to make. As a composer and a writer, it's like I'm a scientist in a laboratory, and I put things together, and I say, I, I might wake up in the middle of the night and say, y'all get up, come here. Come put the vocals on this. <laughs> I can just create things. You know, who right, does that? Who has this? You know what I mean? It's like I wake up to a dream. Some people wake up to a nightmare. Right. But I wake up every every morning with a smile on my face. And that's my hey. family. I'm just so thankful. Yeah, you, you're blessed. You, you're, you're all blessed. Mom, Pop, you got your... You got your wife, you got your children, everybody's together. Y'all making beautiful music, activities. So, yeah, you're in a blessed state. Hey, James, Foddy Records, you got any questions you want to ask um, the Curtis family? Hi, James. Hi. Hi. Thanks for hooking this up, James. Nah, this, it's my pleasure. I, I, I remember when I was um, a couple of, couple of or maybe a couple of weeks ago when I first saw the video, I was like, it was like 2 in the morning here, 2 or 3 in the morning. And I'm, I was up. I just couldn't sleep. You know, I'm just, you know, when you when you're doing this kind of stuff, you kind of stay up all night for some reason, right? So, I just can you hear me? Okay, guys, can you? Am yeah, I good? yeah. Can you oh, we can hear you good. Yeah. Okay. So I just happened to like see see you guys, and then I had to I had to do a double take, right? So I'm like, huh? Oh, what is? I have to keep playing. I had to keep going back, and I said to myself. Like I'm, I'm from the old school too. So I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm in my late fifties. So, you know, this is just reminiscent of something of the good old days, right? When I saw it, right? So, I said, no, I, I was on your Instagram for like an hour. I'm like, oh my god, this is like, like a breath of fresh air, right? So, I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate you guys. You know, I appreciate like, you know, what you're bringing to the music industry, um, especially. Um, you know what you're doing as a family you know that's very very important these days and uh, one of the things i want to ask you is uh one of the things i want to ask you is uh when you guys are in the studio you're working right 
how is that process working with everyone? Like, how? Because usually it's like different, uh, 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 different people, but you have your family. So, how is the process recording a song together in a studio? Uh, uh, well, okay, yeah, <laughs> I, I do. I do the major part of the production. Uh huh. But what, what I've been doing over the last past couple of years is getting them in to teach them how to put the music together from the producer's aspect. So I utilize, you know, I'll I'll do an outline of the song, and then mm -hmm. I'll say, okay, now, you know, because I. I'll play all the instruments on on, on track, and then I will move what plays, and I have them come put put themselves into the, the track. Generally, that's okay. how. It or we do live in like the recording studio, like we did a different song. We'll do a, a live set session there. But for the mm. most part, the process is um, I'll outline the song, and maybe one of them might write a song, and we'll we'll go wow. into it and do pre-production there and then and then it goes off to um you know to, to, to mixing and mastering and a lot of my mixing and stuff is done by Peter E's brother uh, okay Peter, My Peter Michael okay and then <laughs> that's okay right okay oh you have them that's what I'm saying I have to, I just said that I'll have them come in and play mm -hmm. and stuff, you know I'll give them the idea of what it is that I play, and then I'll say, okay, I want you to put the shelf in there. Okay. And they all come in, I remove whatever it was that I played, and it's them playing the track. So that's wow. how we're able to do it. Um, okay. Other than, uh, other than just being doing it live in, the, in a recording studio at the same time, that's pretty much our process. Oh, that's good. It's also a pleasure to see how you guys practice. When, and I'm glad you guys uh, disclosed that. But when people to, to see when you guys rehearse, you know, uh, it, it's just it's just a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I love sending out the clips and passing it out to everybody. I do as much as I can on my on my end to help promote. You know, because uh, like I said, you know, I'm, I'm very very fascinated with you guys. And I, I see big things for you guys already. So uh, I was looking at your website, and I was reading up on you know, everything you guys have accomplished. And I said to myself, wow, this I, I, I want to help these guys out, you know, as, as much as I can. So, you know, it's been my pleasure. And one other thing, are you guys coming to um, New Jersey, New York anytime soon? Or you have any uh, tours, anything like that set up? Well, uh, right, now, part, so? right now what we're doing, our next big performance, we just sold out Yoshi. Um, mm -hmm. Our next nice. big performance is going to be on the 28th, I think, of September at the Blue Note in Napa. Oh, nice. Very nice. So this is setting us up to get festivals and to do the Blue okay. Note all, of, all over the world. But okay. we don't have one exclusive. Um, okay. The brother that works with us works with uh, the Escobedo family and, and a few other artists. Okay. Um, gotcha. His name, his name is Victor. I'm Orion. Um, Roy and, and good brother. We got good good people around it. Around good. it. That's good. We have a manager, we have a management team. Um, co manage they co manage with us because we we, we yeah, because I've been in the industry a long time mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so what I know what it is that I I want us to do and that's to maintain our narrative in a society right. of today where we've kinda of gone pretty perverse. Yeah, uh, yeah. everything. Uh, representation yeah. of black humanity, and yes, I understand that we're not a monolith, but we do have a responsibility as descendants of African slaves, who in this country had to fight and claw their ways out of such treachery uh, imposed yeah. upon them, so that we could create a, 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 a image for ourselves. I mean, black folk here in America, we're a new people. We are a new right. people. I, I call myself mm -hmm. black. I first call myself African American. Um, I'm a black person of African descent. Right. That doesn't mean that I don't connect with my African roots, but we are a new people who had to recreate ourselves. We had to. Right. You, it's, we're, we're different, and we've given more to the world than anyone has given to the world. Yeah. So it's, that's the perspective of, of where our family's coming from, 
and the family structures in America has been decimated. Not yeah. just black families, but white families. Yeah. Yeah. But, mm-hmm. I mean, it's, they've, they've dethroned the, the, the structure of the family, and this is why we don't have any power. Right. Nothing. So we're all about family. Right. right. We're all about awesome. a fortifying family. We're about family connections. We're about family and community. And this will, this is the premise, and we're not right. we're not going to change that. We've been offered millions of dollars for people to come take them and make a Jackson Five out of them. Wow. We told them, no, you're not getting my children. <laughs> right. So we turned down millions of, dollars, and we've been homeless before, just wow. to show you okay. how to show you how we ain't changing our narrative. We're just wow. not. Awesome. Right. Hey, hey, so, Papa, Papa, see, I got to commend you, man. Kudos to you. Uh, I hear amongst your wife and your children, they always put wise wisdom, and you are um, be able to keep um, a family together today is hard. You got so many things coming against you, and you were able to do that. You was wise. You allowed God to keep the family together, and I don't even know if the children understand all of it um, okay. now. But That's important. I'll yeah, go, go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Somebody speak. Uh, I'll say, I'll say, okay. <laughs> when, um, when they did talk about, um, when you guys talked about how, uh, well, Publicity did talk about um, uh, people offering money to turn us into a Jackson 5. Mm-hmm. If it were, um, if I were like my, if I were younger and you would explain, you would explain to, and you would tell me what you talked about, I probably wouldn't understand. Right. But after the after the um, stuff we went through at uh, AGT, I I can understand. America's Got Talent. I can understand why. Uh, yeah. Why it's reasonable to. Receive. Matter of fact, I was showing um, American Got Talent that way people could see great you guys are, and even on the highest platform, you guys stand out. Um, you got oh. the lights, the glitz, and but you're able to keep the family together and you you guys definitely got the talent um i had to take it off because i was getting that oh we turning it off because american got talent that was um but anyway they were able to see a little bit of you guys um and hear a little bit of you guys singing and playing performing you guys are excellent um and we all know i think everybody knows that you guys should be on the top you should be on the radio you should be everywhere we're excellent talent music you should be in all those platforms but um i'm thanking god most of all um papa c that you kept that mama c you guys kept that family together that is awesome and that itself is a gem without the talent let's say you didn't have no talent just you guys being together that's (laughs) awesome awesome Papa C is the embodiment of wise. Right, I, and I see that. Um, and not just the wisdom. I'm sorry. <laughs> not just the age. Right, and he looks good. He looks good for his age. I mean, I'm like, I thought he was in his fifties. Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, we're vegan. We've been vegan for ah, uh, that, that helps. Eight years this year. Right. Go ahead, now, now, hey, hey, did you guys do? I'm, tell the truth. You guys missed some of that meat. Huh? Tell the truth. <laughs> we used to. I, I, I still uh, reminisce about a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> you know, after we see the process, it, it's just not healthy. You know, if we were somewhere where we knew um, that the USDA right. was uh, legit. But you know, it's the it, FDA. That makes FDA? The, the FDA. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> USDA. Yeah, yeah. yeah uh, Daddy, Daddy isn't really great with acronyms. He usually <laughs> used to say ADT as American Idol, American Idol, or <laughs> DAT okay, tag. My, hey, hey, Papa, see, my kids do the same thing. They like, Dad, it's not that one. It's not that. <laughs> they do the exact same thing. And now I used to be I used to be the smartest one. Now I feel like I'm the dumbest one in the family. <laughs> right. <laughs> but you know, the meat thing, you know, we just don't do animal anymore. And, and That's good. I lost eighty five pounds. Awesome. 
um, I was on the borderline of just about everything you could think of because mm-hmm. I was just sitting and not getting my exercise or eating. The, the, you know, we, we ate okay. Right. We never ate really foul or bad. Mm-hmm. And then I'm also a martial arts instructor, so I teach martial arts, but I never get to work out with because I'm teaching the students. I uh, gotcha. And so I was sitting down a lot, and I'd go to the class and teach, but I wasn't actually doing the kumite and doing some of the other stuff because I was producing a lot of music. And so right. when you're sitting on your behind, you know, I gained I gained a lot of weight. I was over 300 pounds, well over 300 yeah, pounds. Yeah. So I went to walk in, gave up the gluten first, and it was a process. And once the vegan thing happened, you know, I still cook exactly the same way. Not exactly. I can make the food taste like it did. Right. Same same seasons food. without the meat. Yeah. Like you can I make a mean vegan gumbo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Vegan seafood gumbo. We always look forward to that every Christmas. It's with pink pink oyster mushrooms. You going to give away the Oh, sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Well, you guys got to try it. That that actually might be another product that you guys want to sell, too. Well, we we actually have a a treatment. We have four treatments for for four TV shows that we, we plan on marketing. Oh, at yeah. some point or shopping, one of them is a, a vegan adventure nice. where we we go across the country. Anthony and, Bourdain. Yeah, it's like <laughs> we're like the Anthony <laughs> Bourdain, but vegan, and we share martial arts and we share music with different cultures all over the world. Wonderful. That, that's one of our prime. Yeah, uh, I, I can see you guys being oh. very successful in a reality show, big time. I mean, yeah. I could see that. Um, you, um, you guys reminisce, uh, and and I, I don't mean, but you guys do remind me just a little bit. I mean, you're much more talented than the Partridge family when I used to. So you guys have that. I and I, I don't. I don't mean to compare you. I don't. But that. Oh, no, no. That's the closest thing. We love that. You don't know how many times people say, oh, cool, a black partridge. Right. That, yeah, but you're, be, then, you're better. You're better. Like, <laughs> and then they'll be like, yeah, but it's mom and dad, and, and they're actually real. <laughs> right. Right. And that says a lot right there. That that's a, We've actually been approached by writers who wanted to write a new partridge family with oh, us. That would be awesome. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, nothing's come yet. And it was a sitcom, and then we've had other people – approach us about doing a reality show, but their kind of reality was proposal was like, yeah, it's like Kardashians. And I'm like, no, that's no, not. no, if it was about no. the music, then cool, but no. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you yeah. notice nobody's scantily dressed and we're not religious fanatics. We're not, we, we, we go to church, but you know, we, we're more of a, of a high frequency spiritual family. We don't, we ain't all off into the church like that. You know, we, we love our church. Jones. Right. Methodist Memorial, Jones Memorial Methodist here in San Francisco, where the pastor is Errol Gordon. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Yeah, so give him, give him a shout out. And uh, our musician there is the great Ricardo Scales, known as the Black Liberace. My Godfather. Yeah. <laughs> so, hey, hey, so, guys, yeah. hey, guys, Um, before I um, make sure you give people your links. And the next question I'm going to ask, and I kind of want each person to answer this. What do you see as your dream? Um, dream. When, when you dream big and you say, here's, and I know you guys already shared some of you probably want the reality show because that seemed like that's a great um, niche for you guys. But um, when you're looking at, oh, this is what, this is what God has, um, vision God has given me or dream. What do you see? Well, hmm. Can I, can I start first? Yeah, Let me can. start. The dream is, and, and I'm done, um, is to always maintain our narrative of righteousness. Okay. And want to do the right thing in our community and, and, and to inspire the world to want to think again about the value and the importance of family. So, Papa C... It's not necessarily a lot of money. Is that what you're saying? Not necessarily, but I mean, the money would be cool too. Okay, all right, all right. Well, I, I want that included then. Yeah, yeah. With, We're with, speaking things into existence. Yeah, with, with, with the money that goes along with that, 
And, you know, for people to understand that to, to spread love is not corny. Right. It's the most ridiculous thing in the world. You show love and people think that that's corny. Right. So we just want to kind of reinstate values again. Yeah. You know, at yeah. least spark some common sense and just treating each other kind again. Right. I think you know, that's... that's I think that's what's refreshing. Like Jimmy, when he saw you, he was blown away. When I saw you guys, I was blown away. And it was refreshing to see a family um, together, enjoying themselves, and then also have the talent that you guys have. I mean, all it seemed like all of you guys can sing, all of you guys can play instruments. I mean, and if, hearing your story, the kids get it naturally. It's in the genes. It's like they didn't even have to work for it that hard. Yeah, so, so our narrative is we're kind. We're respectful, mm -hmm. but we also don't take a bunch of crap. We don't, take okay. no we, don't, we don't take no stuff. Papa we, don't take we no that to be unkind is unnecessary. So we're always checking people, and we do it with love, right. unless it requires the next level of stuff. But, you know, we always try to, you know, I'm a mili I'm an ex-military man. Right. I'm also a so, so my tolerance for people being mistreated is just not cool. I, yeah. I don't. I don't get on with that because it's, it's easier to love than it is than it is to hate. Right. Right. Did we hear from everybody? Did I hear from everybody? I, I don't. No, we're, we're going back to the dream. Uh, okay, right. dream. Go back to the dream. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Thank you, Papa C. Um. And well, I guess like the dream. I mean, technically, we are living the dream. Ah, like, sick yeah. now. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess in terms of what we want for the future, I think just to, like, internationally get our message across Good. to families and stuff, just being able to spread love and uh, creating generational wealth. Awesome. All right. Okay. Very good. Very good. All right. Um. My name is Isis. Isis. Uh, and um, y'all basically just said everything I wanted to say. Y'all stole my line. Yeah, <laughs> but, but I want I want you to share what you, you kind of envisioned. You saw maybe God um, puts a vision. So I also want you to share that if you, if you have one. Like, mm. oh, I'm going to be here. I'm going to be doing that. I'm going to be wearing that. Or I'm going to be with this ah, person. Yeah. I agree. <laughs> um, um, well, uh, I love physics. We all love physics, mm -hmm. but I've always just wanted to learn physics in general because I'm curious about how everything works, just how the world works. Mm -hmm. And with the, with the time that we will have, I would want to go and explore the entire world. Wow. Okay. Explore. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. Yeah, and yeah. I'll find islands that aren't discovered yet. Wow, that'd be incredible. <laughs> Very good. That's what I wanted this to hear. Is, I want to hear those type of... This is Phoenix. Um, S um, Phoenix? What? Phoenix? What? Phoenix, 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 Phoenix. Yeah. Um, I've always loved astrophysics. Um mm -hmm. I mean, because there's just, like, so much. Like, it's, like, literally infinite. Um, but I also, like, I also like computer engineering. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, this is Kiki, and Kiki? I'd say outside of music, um, I really like building my own costumes. So, oh, hopefully, nice. when I'm older... I'll be able to compete around the world and win stuff and by cosplaying and showing my art. All right. Day. Hey, hey, Kiki, you guys, you guys, I see you guys had on some fabulous costumes that I'm loving. Who, who makes those costumes? Or who, how do you guys get those costumes? Who does that? Oh, our outfits. I meant, I thought you meant home. Um, a lot of the times we find things at thrift stores. Or oh, okay. Like Goodwill. And then we take them to Piedmont Boutique, our tailor, Moody, oh. Hate Street. And then we, um, like, kind of alter it and, like, to how we like it. Yeah, because you guys got yeah. some great, I've seen some great pictures, videos with the outfits. I'm like, whoa, 
Those are nice. <laughs> Okay, you can okay. thank Kate Street for that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, this is Niall. And, what's uh, up, now? Hey, what's going on? <laughs> uh, when it comes to the music, I just want to play more. Because, like, we haven't been playing that much for a while. But, like, uh, I want to play outside more and just play for the people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, outside. Yeah. I, I, I'm a DJ and I like playing. I like be outside in the park and the whatever playing. That's what I love. That I, I get adrenaline from that. So I understand what you're saying now. Cool. Oh, and Thank then you. I guess I guess I'm last. But to speak to the costumes um, again, really, Papasi and Zahara, they are the visionaries when it comes to our theme when we when we do a photo shoot or video shoot or uh, when we perform. Because uh -huh. uh, when my husband first met me, I so enough couldn't dress. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it was pretty bad, so bad that Zahara, when she was two years old, she was like, <laughs> she was like, Mama, look, I have pink boots and I have a pink shirt. <laughs> <laughs> And I was like, wow. oh, my, baby, my baby's embarrassed of me. <laughs> wow. I looked up, so when I met my husband, I didn't wear makeup. I just kind of threw on whatever. And it was this weird statement of, like, I was protesting against societal pressures I against <laughs> I got it. I got it. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I was definitely, my husband said I was a diamond in the rough. So anyway. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, going back to the dream, you know, I had this dream. And... um. I don't know if you're familiar with the live recording that Bill Withers did. I think it was it was in 1976 is, or 78 for the BBC. Is that is that before Use Me? I, Use I, Me. I think it was before that. Okay. Perhaps he would know. Um, no, it, was during the time. it was during the time. Same so time. He okay. Did, he did a live studio recording session, it, and it, it reminds me of remember when VH1 used to do. Those live concerts, I forgot what they called them. Uh, is it Unplugged? <laughs> unplugged? Yeah. Uh, unplugged? So, okay. Yeah, that's my dream is to do something like that where we're we're all live, everything's live, and it's being documented. Like, that's my immediate dream. And basically, we've pretty much wrapped on our second album. Oh, wow. But neat. I, I, would, I would love, I'm, I'm like trying to hold my husband and like, hey, let's, let's raise funds so then we can do something where it's, we're live in the studio. Everything's live because, you know, I see ourselves as cultural preservationists. Right. You know, a lot of times people will come at us and say, "Well, why are you, why do you guys do nostalgic music?" And I'm like, "Okay, how come when white artists do it, it's refreshing, <laughs> but when black artists celebrate their own contribution to the to the world, it's it, it becomes dated. No, when I saw you guys, it was so refreshing. And uh, it, <laughs> it automatically br it brought back the vision of Sly and Family Stone and all that. And I'm like, and I got excited, just like yeah. James. It's like, whoa, we need that. We need that. We need love that. It. Yeah, and you know, I my dream is to do that because I would love if we, even if we're not, you know, I would just love for it to start a trend of people going back to really recording their actual voice in studio. Well, they are they are some hip hop artists. I know there's a few here local, and I've yeah. seen a few that when they do their stuff, they use musicians live. They like that live feel too. I they love it. Yeah, they yeah. like that live feel. There is something, and it, it can't be taken away. When you see an artist play with an actual band, there yeah. is some electricity that cannot be duplicated by a machine i just i i just saw digital beats i don't know digital digital planets uh -huh. there's a rap hip-hop rap group and when they did their stuff when they originally did their stuff they did their stuff kind of live so when they perform they sound exactly like the record because they did it with musicians and they did right. it live yeah i, I think i'm hope i'm right hey Fadi, Fadi, am, am i right i'm james yeah we love digable planets yeah. Oh yes, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. Right. As a matter of fact, they're performing now, so they kind of oh, wow. like, they're doing tours now. I see them on. I follow them on Instagram, so they're doing oh. the same thing. I mean, it, it sound the same. I mean, they're they're yeah. in the fifties now, Chris, but Chris they're, Fresh, you know, yeah, yeah, they're they're they're, 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 they're still using live instruments and, and live music, and 
you know, the outfit, you know what I mean? They're still doing what they did back then. So that was refreshing for us back yeah. then. It, you know, it's like a jazz, like a jazz type of feel. Rap, rap, yeah. Rap, yeah, it was, yeah, yeah. I love so, it. And you guys are like that. So if you don't have to get, you guys can do new stuff because you're talented. But keep that, whatever you do, keep that in what you got going on, especially yeah. family together, performing together. Even if some, somebody was to do something, because it, it, it might be where uh, some of you guys might go off and do another group, but make sure you keep the core group together. Make sure that family is always performing. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Is it, is it digital planet or diggable planet? Diggable, diggable, diggable. I, I was saying it wrong. Diggable. So they were laughing at me because they said, Daddy is. Diggable. I think you're right. Diggable. Diggable. <laughs> See, they were clowning no. me. <laughs> I get that all the time, Papa C. It's, uh, no, pro no problem. All righty, guys. We we got like a few more minutes. Um, Share your links and then um, Foddy Records. James, Um, anything you want to um, add, add to it? Oh, uh, no. I just want to... Uh, Say thank you very much for this. Uh, it was uh, a good opportunity for me and a, a blessing for me to help, you know, at least try to set this up. You know, um, I'm, I'm growing it, it with my company as well. I just started a couple of years ago. And, um, but I went along, along the way, I'm meeting so many other companies that, work, that want to align with me. And, um, you know, a couple of them are like vocal channels, um, music channels where they showcase music videos and they showcase artists. I'm in. I'm in. I uh, works with with one right now. I just had to finalize the agreement this week, and uh, he wants to showcase a lot of um, a lot of uh, people that I that I work that I come in contact with because uh, they like the quality of the the artists that I, I run that I run across. And um, if if that works out, I would like to maybe ask you guys if you want to talk to him, and then maybe he can showcase you guys on the show. He has, uh, you know, it's uh, also someone in, uh, on Hotel Production or Hotel Universe in Florida. I'm um, in works with them as well. They also have a couple of music video channels. So things like that is what I'm working on so that I can help artists that I run across to help ex uh, expose them to uh, the world. And, you know, I just love what you guys are doing. And uh, I appreciate everything. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. She's going to share a link. Uh, we, 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 we want to get on tour. And we gotcha. Want to do, you know, we we've been offered some tours, but we don't want to be on the ticket with a lot of that stuff that's just not pro family appropriate. So we gotcha. turned down. So yeah. so in order for us to keep our narrative, we got to be in the, in the quality of of uh, tours and performances that are family friendly. Right. Yeah. I feel you. So that's what yeah. we want to do. So yeah, we've turned down a lot, but yeah. if we could put together our own tour. You should check out our website and our um, yes, our our, um, our nonprofit and what we're doing with our nonprofit. Yeah. Wonderful. And I think that could feed into what you all are doing on the coast and how we can all do some stuff together. Right. Uh, please yeah. check that out. And I want to make sure that we get your address so we can send all of you um, signed copies of our of our uh, CD of our CD because it's a piece of art. That was created by a brother in uh, Kenya. Wonderful. Yeah. So our link is, um, our website is thecurtisfamilycenos.com. And you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, um, at the Curtis Family Ceno. And um, the nonprofit that my husband's talking about is Passing the Torch. So our goal is that with every date that we, that we, schedule um across the nation because we want to get to the east coast because second <laughs> our top city is san francisco when i look at analytics of our supporters right and from number two to ten it's all east coast oh, number wonderful. Two is the door, uh, jersey florida it, it's all east coast so i'm like we got to get over there right right and um so yeah you can find us online and our nonprofit is passing the torch so what we want to do is if we go to Buffalo, New York, we want to also offer maybe the day before our concert a free free, free, free workshop. workshop for families. Nice. And we want a lot of times parents want to only sign up their children for lessons, but we're, we want to pull in the parents so then everyone can play together as a family. So yeah. our situation is not won't be you as unique as it is. It'll be normal because culturally, music is everything. Art is everything. Yes. That's how you can 
participate. That's how you connect with your children and with your community. So, yeah, that's our goal. And music is everyone's birthright. We're all supposed to be musicians. Yeah, I'm like, wait, hold on. Like my dad. Yeah, I like it. Like our daddy says all the time, stronger families build stronger communities, stronger communities build stronger nations, and stronger nations build a better world. Awesome. All right, guys, I'm going to say good night. Good night, Foddy Records. Good night, Curtis Family C. No, it was good to, good to get to see you and know you and talk Thank to you, you all. God bless Thank you. You. you have a good one, guys. God bless you. Okay, guys. Take care. Take care. Let's <laughs> 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 <laughs>